guys, and welcome back to Combat Guide. I am KH. I am Sandra. And today we're going to show you how to fight someone who's fighting in the southpaw stance or how to deal with southpaws. Okay, so first off, do you have any good ideas or points you want to mention when fighting someone in the southpaw stance? Yeah, I have three things. Um, number one. Or if you're is, fighting in the southpaw stance. Yes. Number one is to always um, keep your front foot uh, outside of your opponent's front foot. Mm -hmm. You want to stay on the outside. All right. Good. Number two is to always uh, try to control the jab. You do this by keeping your front hand in front of your to the outside of your opponent's front hand. We'll explain the details on all of this afterwards. The final thing is to always watch out for your opponent's cross. You do this by trying to circling around your opponent's outside. Good. Very good points. So, posi the positioning of the feet. Keep your front foot outside of your opponent's front foot. And there will always be a battle for the jab. You want to control the jab. And you want to stay away from your opponent's rear hand. Okay, so... Let's start with the positioning of the feet. So if you're fighting someone who's a southpaw, they'll be probably better than you to keep their foot on the outside you, than you are, because they've done so many fights fighting in that same stance. But you always want to keep your foot on the outside, so therefore you circle to this side to get the positioning correct. So you're always trying to keep that front leg outside, as long as you have that front leg outside, you have a huge advantage because if I'm on the inside here, he can control me with his jab because he can land his jab a lot easier than I can land my jab. If I'm trying to jab from this side, he can counter it. And also, I'm very in the danger zone here because I'm very close to his rear hand, to his cross while he's on the outside of my cross. We can show you from this angle as well. So if he's standing like this with his hands out, and I'm here, he's got his front foot outside of mine, I would walk straight into that cross. Okay. And the next point here will be the controlling of the jab and the front hand. So what we want to do, like, if I'm fighting someone who's a real good southpaw, and they're moving that leg out all the time. You have to be very wary of what they're doing with their hand, because that's even more important. Like, now, Xander's front foot is a little bit outside of mine, but I'm not staying on this side. I'm keeping my hand out. I don't want to give him that position. So we'll be dueling here about control. You see South and Orthodox boxers stand like this a lot of times, so the fight will be going on around here. They'll be setting each other up for the cross or the jab. And the last point is, yeah, you want to circle to the outside. Because, again, I don't want to walk into his cross. So if I'm walking this way, he can hit me very easily with that left cross. So I want to try to keep the fight to the outside. Because I'm walking away from that dangerous rear hand hole at all times. These are the basics. Now, there are a lot of exceptions. If you guys ever watched Ali fight, the two southpaw fights he did, he walks the other direction. And you can do that, but you have to be aware of the dangers that that will represent. Uh, again, like, if I'm walking to the out to my opponent's inside, I can do that if I'm further away. From here, I can see what he's doing. If he's doing a one-two, I have the distance to stay outside and stay out of harm's way. But I can't do that from this short range here. Because as soon as I'm walking this way, I will be hit by his rear hand. Okay. So these are some of the stuff that you want to keep in mind. And we're going to show you some counters and some attacks and some cool stuff. So we'll start with this basic thing. You want to counter the jab 
and you counter your opponent's jab with your jab. So when we're standing like this, if Xander's on the outside, and I do my jab, he just pushes it a little bit aside, and then he goes straight over my front hand here. Bang. Come on, set hand. He's on the outside, he just slides over my hand and he would hit, hit me straight in the chin. Bang. And he could follow that up with a cross. He could do his left cross. That way. Or he could double the jab. to counter the jab he can he can counter me with his hook do you want to kind of get your fighter to be good with their front arm like the jab the double jab the feints the hook the uppercut if your fighter is good with movement rhythm and using the front arm that will give them a huge advantage when fighting someone who's southpaw or if they are a southpaw so he can counter my jab also with a hook. He steps to the outside as soon as I hook. Now as soon as I jab. Bam. Bam. Wait for it, wait for it. So if I would come here, bam, he would step out of my line, and then I would walk straight into that punch. And he can do the same and follow it up with a cross. So he goes one, two. Two step. Bam, bam. Out of my line. me with an uppercut. It works the same way. You want to get outside and then you counter. But what he wants to do, he wants to land the punch at the same time that he lands his foot. So as soon as I'm punching here, he steps. And when he steps, he counters. So you don't want to go step and then punch. You want to do it simultaneously. Don't get your opponent's chin up so you can follow that up with a cross again. instead of your lead hand and that is a very dangerous counter I could do my jab and you can it'll be like a jab jab so if we were fighting in the regular stance you see a lot of guys counter the jab with a jab to the body or you jab and step and jab it'll be kind of the same principle only with a cross so it's a lot more power in, in the punch so okay I'm coming with my jab and he steps to the outside Crosses. And you can follow that cross up with a right hook. Punch. 
And he could follow that up with another cross if he wants to as well. So it would be slow motion. Uh, in the middle, yeah. Bang, and he steps and he punches again. You can do that two ways. You can either step, pivot, and punch, or you can take three steps. So you can go one, uh, two, and three, and then pivot. So you could go one, two, three, pivot. We'll show you both. So we can. Ah, uh, yeah. So we can show you with the pivot first. So we'll show it slow. So he steps out, uh, other hand, steps his right foot out and then counters with the left. And then he pivots and check hooks me, bam! And then he's got the last cross. to me with the two first punches he can do an uppercut on the last one so we can do the same with the steps so you could go one two and from here he could do the uppercut probably uh, ah, hang, hang. will be very efficient fighting someone in the southpaw stance because your cross will be if we're standing like this when I'm fighting when I'm throwing out the cross actually standing as if we were standing orthodox so it's not a bad habit to start your attacks with your rear hand when you're fighting someone who's in the southpaw stance so we're going to show you some good combinations starting with the rear hand so Xander will just do a cross, and you can do a jab and a cross. So just do it regularly, bam, bam, bam. And just to get that good angle, he can sidestep while doing the punches. So he's going to his side. Get away from my right hand. Or he could do the, instead of a jab, he could swap the jab for a hook. So it's a cross, hook, cross. I don't. Yeah. Ah, my bad. And Lining this up. Good. And when we're standing like this, it's always good to use your cross to the body as well. You could, um, it's very easy to hit your opponent to the body because if we're standing like this, it's not as easy because once he does the cross from here, uh, if we're standing the same, he won't get the same angle as if I'm standing in the south cross stance. Um, yeah, about the counter jab, you can also double that up, I forgot to mention that, so he 
Close over my arm and yeah, doubles it up. You come in like this, bang, bang. And that brings me to, you can use that just as a attack as well. So he can just do the double jab while stepping to the outside. Good. And he could follow that up with a cross. Again, you want to walk to the outside of your opponent so you're staying away from their cross. Um, what else? Oh yeah. But as I said, there are exception to the, exceptions to this rule. You can go to the other side, but you, make, you have to make sure that you have a little bit more distance. So if Sander is south by I'm like this, he can circle to this side as long as he's got more distance. So then he can counter me. If I'm doing a jab and a cross, he can catch my jab, and then he steps out to his side when I do my cross. And then he can counter me. Yeah, and no longer stay, and no longer do that. Good distance, and now he can counter me with his cross. And he could follow that up as well with a hook or an uppercut. Oh my Kelly. Yeah, I go by in by Ibra. So there are a lot of opportunities. You have to just make sure that you know your position your reach, what your opponent can do towards you. Um, yeah, these cover most of the stuff. Yeah, also, another, uh, if you want to, you could uh, exchange the cross counter with an overhand. So you could step outside. Because I'm standing like this, a lot of fighters standing like this also tend to drop their guard. He could throw that overhand, bang. And even if I if I'm have if I have a bad guard while jabbing, I would walk straight into that counter. Wow. So just remember, because if I was again, if we were standing the same way, that overhand would be easier for me to protect because I would have my shoulder here. But in this position, gives new angles and new openings. So you want to be. Always remember to have your guard up when you're fighting someone who's southpaw, your rear guard here, and your front arm outside. Because if I'm having my front arm here, that's what I said, I give up the position, I give up the battle for the jab. If I'm here, he can jab me whenever he wants. I'm going to prevent him from doing that. So when I'm having the arm out here, I'm kind of neutralizing his jab or stopping him from doing that. As we said, you want to keep the hand on the outside, but there are a lot of different things to do. Some people want to go over it. They try to battle to go over the jab. So they try to bang, bang over and go in. And I could bang him as well. I could try to wait for him, and I'm purposely on the inside here. Or you can do it. So you're baiting me, you're giving me the position on the outside, because you're waiting for me to counter with a, with a jab. And as soon as I try to counter, uh, as soon, sorry, as soon as I attack with a jab, you go to the outside, bam, or to the head. You're baiting me, I'm thinking I have the better position here. I can go straight in, but as soon as he steps out, bam, I'm walking right into that cross. So a lot of southpaws do this. So remember if you're fighting a southpaw and you're on the outside, just be aware of their right hand. You don't want to walk carelessly into that. Okay, so I will show that again. So we're battling here. You give me the good position on the outside. And as soon as I try to jab you, bah! Yeah. I think this covers most of the stuff we wanted to show them today, right? Yeah. Anything you can recall that we need to do? No, I think we got to go. All right, so, I mean, there are a lot of stuff you can do and these are just some pointers and tips and techniques that we like to do. So let me know if you have some other techniques you like to use against southpaws or if you're a southpaw and you have some cool stuff you like to do, write it in the comments and let us know. Thanks guys for tuning in and I'll see you again next time. Take care.